Is it true that you've been working in the firearm industry for 50 years in, in one way or another? Me personally? Well, yeah, I've been uh, been in it 40 years full-time, and I probably worked close to 10 years prior to that in grammar school and high school. <laughs> making so you got an early start, in other yes, words. very early start. Uh, other than being the boss, what, what was the best job? Uh, you know, I think the best job probably was... Um, getting to go on hunts. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just, uh, I went on a lot of hunts with my dad and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just uh, was able to, to do those and experience some of that. But, you know, as far as vocationally, uh, I really enjoyed being in the, in the sales department. Oh, yeah. I was in there and just being able to work with our dealers and, and uh, uh, get behind the counter and people coming in. Um, how hard has it been to bring the other products the other product lines out from the shadow of the bark cloth? That's an interesting question. I mean, I, I think we're making some headway, but you know, 10 years ago, if you were to ask the, the person on the street what is what they do, they would well, they make a, they make a, a Mark V a Basque Magnum. And, uh, you know, we've been in the shotgun business since the early 1960s, mm -hmm. uh, but we're known for the Mark V, but I think over the, the past 10 years we've made a lot of headway in Certainly with the Vanguard line, the Vanguard line, line of rifles, yeah, that uh, you know, we certainly sell a lot more Vanguards than the Mark Vs, and there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Vanguard users out there that love their, love their products, so I think we're changing that. Now, you know, the Weatherby's history is that it's produced guns both overseas and, and it's moved production at times uh, here in the U.S. From your perspective today, what what is that on the on the U.S. versus overseas production? Well, you know, my my father first moved the Mark V from the U.S. to Germany back way back in the late 1950s, and I, I think it was really what his learning experience there has traveled throughout the, the company that that it really doesn't matter where it's made what country it's made in, as long as we are controlling the quality and we put the effort in to train the people and inspect the product and to build the quality in. Uh, so we, what we try to do in order to keep our products the best value is to find where we can manufacture the product in the best quality the most economical way possible. What's your all-time favorite whether it be rifle or not? Ooh, it's a tough one. But I would say my absolute favorite is the Mark V Ultra Lightweight. Ultra Lightweight. And uh, whether it's in the standard and the Magnum, I, um, I really enjoy a lightweight rifle. And it just feels solid. Uh, you know, if you go to the if you go to the standard, our six lug standard action, I have a two forty ultra lightweight rifle, and that is a very high performance gun. And uh, you're talking about a very lightweight. And what's your all-time favorite weather caliber? You know, uh, it used to be the 270 weather the magnet, and now I've come to just love the 240 weather. Okay. And I use that on uh, everything that I can use it on. Um, and I, I just love the speed of that cartridge. You know, my father's was always the 257. Oh. I guess I kind of sandwiched him on both sides of that with my two graders. Can Can a customer still purchase the prototypical full dress Mark V? Yes. Uh, the very typical Mark V would be what we call our Mark V Deluxe. Mark V Deluxe. And uh, that's still available. It, it always has been there and probably always will be. And it looks very, very similar to what it looked like 50 years ago. I see that uh, you're enlisting various sports and entertainment celebrities uh, to help present the public face of what it be today. What's your hope for that? What's the thinking for that? Well, it's really just broadening the base of weather and getting the communication about whether the, the markets that we haven't been in before. They, they, we're hitting a customer base that they, they're getting, maybe just starting to think about shooting sports. Uh, and, and so they're, they're being exposed to whether the through, uh, you know, if you, take a, if you take a person like Chad Mendez, is one of our, our spokespersons, he reaches a whole world that we've never reached. And so on his Facebook page and his Twitter, and that message of Weatherby goes out, and so we feel like we're hitting um, a broader customer base than we ever have before. Here's the tough one here. If, if Roy Weatherby was around today, 
what message would he have for the current generation of long-range shooters and hunters? Mm. Um, and there's a, a movement today toward developing long-range shooting skills right. and, and right. more emphasis on hunting at, with, at longer ranges. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just wondering, given what Roy Weatherby yeah. was to the, well, you know, the he, American he, firearm he, industry, what he would have to say about that today. Yeah. He's a Weatherby 300. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he, you know, that was one of the, the, the theories that he had, really, is right. you get these light bullets traveling at very high velocity, you have a very flat trajectory, and that allows you to reach out there beyond the traditionally you would have. Okay, last question. Is there still a Weatherby mystique? You can answer that better than me. <laughs> well, I'm going to take my my legs at it probably. Um, what would you say? Well, we feel that there is when we talk with people who use our product. Uh, there's something magical about weather. And when they're sitting around a campfire and they're talking about the gun that they have, and they say, "I have a weather beat," um, it it still I think carries a mystique with it of. Uh, quality and speed and accuracy that's been there from the very beginning. So we like to think that there is.